Um, and this is an example of a decidable alg algorithm. So we talked about um, acceptance and acceptance tests, right? So what are acceptance tests? We will see from now on acceptance tests with this notation A of X. Okay. So what is an acceptance test? So the A for acceptance and X for what are we accepting on? So acceptance tests are decidable algorithms on acceptance. So will X accept this input where X could be either a DFA or a context-free grammar or a PDA or a regular expression. So X is something. And we're going to see, think about what we're going to do next is, is acceptance decidable for X? Is acceptance uh, decidable for DFAs? Is acceptance decidable for regular expression? And so on. Okay, that's the basic idea of what we want to do. So let's start with DFAs. Is the acceptance of DFAs decidable? That is to say, can I write an algorithm right, that is decidable and recognizes a DFA? We just did, right? If we look back, this algorithm recognizes the acceptance of the DFA with a given input. So what this is asking is, let's say that B is a DFA. So you, you can think of this as a function, if you will, and this will become more clear uh, in the following lesson. But for now, I just want to use the same notation that is in the book, just to be consistent with it. So we have pairs, and this you can think of as the arguments of your function. And the function is ADF. So what are we saying? Is what we're trying to implement is an algorithm, right? That given B and W returns yes or no. Again, decision problems, right? So what are what is the decision problem? The decision problem is for these two parameters, B and W, does B accept W? That's what your algorithm, that's what we're asking. When we say ADFA, we're saying acceptance of DFAs. So the input, so think of it, if it's accepting the DFAs, what is going to be your function? Your function is going to be a function that given a DFA and a word, checks if the word is in the DFA. So the proof is this algorithm showing that the algorithm recognizes the DFA. The, the length, so the, the, you would have to prove this function returns Yes, if and only if the DFA accepts the word. And then you would have to show that the algorithm, this current algorithm, terminates, which we just did informally. So that's how you would proceed to prove this. And then because the algorithm exists, and so there is a Turing machine that represents that, Turing, that algorithm, and therefore the Turing machine that, re that implements that algorithm is decidable, right? Because the algorithm is decidable, and the Turing machine is equivalent to the algorithm. So we can say that ADFA is decidable because there exists a decidable algorithm that recognizes. So what about ANFA? NFA is a similar question. So we're checking if the NFA accepts a certain input. So can we always say yes or no to that? Yes, right? Why? Because we can always convert an NFA to a DFA. And because we can convert that, we've learned how to do that. And that function, so we would have to show that the NFA, the conversion from NFA to DFA is correct. We'd have to show that. What, it, what does that mean? It means that the NFA that you give it as input has the same language as the DFA that comes out. You also have to show that this function terminates for all inputs. And then if this function terminates for all inputs, the function that we have that is DFA accepts, that we also already proved that that terminates for all. If this function call terminates for in all inputs, then this would terminate for all inputs. Hope that makes sense. So NFA accepts is also decidable by construction, right? Because we combined two function calls of two things that always terminate for all inputs. There would be no way of looping, right? There is no loop. <laughs> so how could this loop? Um, so therefore, this is a total function, and 
kind of hand waving and assuming that this function NFA to DFA is correct. And we already proved, established that DFA acceptance is correct. Therefore, the whole thing is correct and terminated. So theorem 4.2 in the book says that ANFA is a decidable length, something that we can believe. So next, are regular expressions decidable? So checking if a word is accepted by a regular expression. And the, the answer might not surprise you because yes, well, I just take a, a regular expression and I know how to convert that into an NFA. That function, let's and wave and assume that the function that converts from regular expressions to NFA is correct. And it comes from the algorithm that we study that is in the book. So the whole thing, this is this, this is this terminates. So we're going to assume that this function terminates for all inputs, and it does. So if this function terminates for all inputs, we know that NFA accepts terminates for all inputs. So this nested function call would terminate for all inputs, and therefore this whole function terminates for all inputs. And that's basically the idea behind the proof. Correctness uh, comes from showing this. This we already know. So therefore, AREX is also a decidable length. So one thing that might confuse you is, why are we calling this a language? A Rex is an algorithm, so why is that a language? Just the way it is, because sets. sets. This is set theory, and the idea is, what you are checking is now a pair of things. So what is the input? Right? So far what we've learned was just one thing. Well, the input is actually one thing, but it's... it's um, if you read what is in the book, they will say, what I do, what we do is just we take the DFA or the regular expression and we take the input and we have a function that will convert those two things into a single string. So think of it as like a serialization, right? So if you, you've done your homework, your mini test two, right? Mini test two, you submit a file. So a file is just a string of characters. If it's a string of characters, you could potentially represent a DFA as a string of characters, right? It's just we serialize it to JSON and we get a string of characters. And then we can read that serialized uh, NFA and we can convert it to a representation of an NFA. So a pair, we could also convert a pair as a JSON thing of two, a list of two things. So you could do that. That can be serialized as a file. It's going to be just a string of, of characters which can be parsed. So having a pair or having just a single word is equivalent in terms of the word. And if, it, if it's just a word, then this whole thing is a language because it takes a word and you're asking something about that word. But this takes a bit to understand. So, but it, you can ignore the idea. You can ignore this keyword language and just think decidable algorithm. So in this module, when we talk about language, what we really care about are algorithms. So is, is this... Or actually, it's more like a problem, right? A, 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 a NFA is like a problem, right? It's something that we want to be able to answer. Is, this, is there an algorithm that implements this pro problem, right? So the problem is decision procedure. So is there an implementation for that? That's what we're trying to. And the way you interpret this is it will be a function and these will be the inputs of that function. See that next. Okay, so next, let's think about context-free grammars and acceptance. Context-free grammars, they can be, there are algorithms. And actually, if you've ever done the compiler's course, you will learn probably an algorithm, maybe the CYK algorithm, that is a decidable algorithm that given a grammar and given some input, which is the, the file that represents the, the file that you're trying to parse, it will tell you whether or not the, the file is parsed. So that is to say, there's another word, another word for saying, is, does that word, is that word accepted by the grammar? So in one of your homeworks, 
right? You homework assignments. You had to derive, write the derivation of accepting a word, of a grammar accepting a word. Um, you can actually write an algorithm that does that for you. A very famous algorithm is called the CYK algorithm, and that algorithm is decidable because it it has been proven that the algorithm terminates for all inputs and it uh, says yes and no if and only if the grammar accepts so if you can write a derivation like you did in cock then the algorithm would say yes if and only if you were able to to, to write that derivation so someone already proved the correctness of this which means that there exists an algorithm that recognizes and decides if a word belongs to a grammar right so therefore acfg is decidable there exists an algorithm to implement it. so similarly you can think about a pda right so for our pdas the acceptance of pda is also decidable yes we know how to convert a pda to a context-free grammar and therefore we can use the algorithm that converts, that checks if a word is in a grammar, and use that to as the decider of a, a, a PDA.